Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Michael Richman, a double board certified cardiothoracic surgeon. I have written several articles about medical misinformation that is flooding social media. Every day there's some new nonsense that is promulgated by a quote, medical influencer, end quote. A common theme is that these charlatans engage in behavior that affects one's life, often promoting false cures for things like cancer. I think we can all agree that this is morally reprehensible to say the least. So I have recently received questions from my readers and patients about using the antiparasitic medicine fenbendazole to treat their cancer. They've all read online or heard from a friend as usual that this is some kind of magic drug. Then this is followed by attacking me and conspiratorial thinking that Big Pharma doesn't want this drug to succeed or have efficacy because it's generic and somehow the generic pharmaceutical companies can't make money. Well, I can assure you that none of this is true. Generic drug companies do make money because let's be real, nobody makes anything in this world without turning a profit. It's just reality. Also, like I said, please don't attack me and tell me that I'm involved with pharma because number one, I'm not in any shape or form. Second of all, we have all lost loved ones from cancer. And as a surgeon, there's nothing more that I would want than to have a cure for all cancers. But much of the time, it is not curable. We just need to accept that. It is treatable, and that is just the fact, okay? And I'm sorry, but here is the truth, because truth matters and facts matter. So like I said, Fenbendazole is an anti-parasitic medicine that has garnered significant attention as a potential cancer treatment, which is fueled solely by anecdotal reports and preclinical studies. However, a thorough review of the available scientific evidence, which you can look up to, reveals that Fenbendazole is not a proven treatment for cancer in humans. Despite promising laboratory and animal studies, there are absolutely zero rigorous clinical trials demonstrating efficacy and pharmacokinetic limitations make achieving therapeutic blood levels nearly impossible through oral administration, and it is an oral drug. Preclinical studies show limited and inconsistent anti-cancer effects. It belongs to a class of drugs which have demonstrated anti-cancer activity in cells and in animal models. However, these effects are highly variable. For example, a study on EMT6 mouse breast tumors found that, quote, fenbendazole did not alter tumor growth, end quote, or enhance radiation therapy despite cytotoxic effects, okay? Despite preclinical findings, there are no published randomized controlled trials or large-scale human studies validating this as a cancer treatment. There's an excellent review in 2024 in Anti-Cancer Research, that's the name of the journal, that concluded that while fembendazole has intriguing biological activities, clinical trials are necessary to determine safety, dosing, and efficacy in humans. The absence of approval by the FDA or the European Agency in Oncology underscores the lack of robust human data. Despite this, Many quacks and influencers cite the widely publicized Joe Tippins case, who is a lung cancer patient, apparently, who claimed remission after using fenbendazole. Again, this is purely anecdotal and lacks any scientific validation in anybody. There are no dosing standards, and without human clinical trials, optimal dosing is unknown. His protocol involved 222 to 444 milligrams per day, and it's completely arbitrary and not based on pharmacokinetic data. There are also known risks. High oral doses are very toxic to the liver, okay? Dangerous. Fenbendazole is also metabolized by, those, by what is called CYP enzymes, which interacts with drugs that do work. Again, remember, an anecdote means nothing. And if you can't demonstrate something over and over in many patients, it falls short of any standard to recommend it for cancer therapy. So why can't we 
recommended? Well, as I said, pharmacokinetic barriers. While oral fenbendazole fails to achieve therapeutic levels because it is poorly absorbed when taken orally. And the bioavailability in pigs is 27%, and it's even lower in humans. And we have done multiple attempts to improve the delivery. Everything has been tried, but yet we can't achieve levels high enough to do anything in the human body. So in summary, while this drug has intriguing preclinical data, there's no credible evidence that as an anti-cancer treatment in humans, it works. The promise of this drug often leads patients to forego established cancer therapies and jeopardize their treatment outcomes. Emphasizing, emphasizing unverified treatments fosters a dangerous culture of false hope where patients may cling to ineffective and alternative therapies in lieu of evidence-based medicine. Now, with that said, if you've exhausted everything and basically the doctors told you there is no hope, I have no problem trying anything, okay? But too many people rely on this and don't rely on proven medicine. For example, chemotherapy has virtually cured testicular cancer, which used to kill young men, nearly 100% of people with testicular cancer. Now, stage four testicular cancer is curable and you don't hear about people dying. In addition, acute leukemias used to have a 90% mortality and we're curing them left and right. Okay, so with that said, um, I'm just trying to provide facts and truth. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. If you want more information, you can go to my website at www.paladinmds.com. And with that, I'm signing off. Thank you.